cool. The end. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where you look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the third episode of the miniseries Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers, as well as the 148th episode overall titled Climb Every Fountain. We begin this episode at the command center where the Alien Rangers are helping Billy finish a regenerator to return the kids to normal. Also, they all patronize him by saying how intelligent he is and clap like this child doesn't have the brain of at least an 18 year old. Billy's really hopeful that this is going to work and they assure him that if anyone can help him it's going to be Sestro. Then Billy's communicator beeps, apparently letting him know that he's late for school. Didn't know that had an alarm clock function. Sestro then says that he regrets that these are the only things that he can do because his hands are too large to finish it. Like dude, get some tweezers or something. Billy then reminds him to stay hidden as he prepares to head out. On the moon, Zed rehashes how Vile is gone and how the implosion device failed. Zed claims that he has a plan and he says that only the alien rangers and the power coins stand in the way of them. He wants to destroy the power coins and tire the alien rangers until they dry out and die. I guess after school, all six rangers are getting on the bus, except for Billy and Adam who are going to Billy's house to work more on the regenerator. Then, on the bus, Bulk and Skull show the ranger kids that they have water balloons for no reason whatsoever. Then the bus starts to go and Goldar and Rito go after them. Rito jumps on top of the bus and the bus comes to a sudden stop, throwing him off onto the ground. The kids inside are kind of freaked and then Rito just walks in and the bus driver tries to tell him it's against the rules for him to just come in here. Then Rito just lasers his eyes, knocking him out. Tommy has a plan though, which he explains to the other ranger kids and Vulcan Skull. And now Rito is defeated by the power of tiny children tossing water balloons and popcorn at him. They kick him off of the bus and Goldar tosses a net on top of Rito, thinking that he's the kids. And then Goldar falls off the bus too. What the hell is this scene? Then Tommy wakes up the bus driver and basically tells him, get it together and let's go. While Vulcan Skull are playing with Rito's sword without he dropped. They get freaked out because it starts glowing, so they toss it out the window, hitting Rito in the head. Remember when both Goldar and Rito were actual threats to the Power Rangers? On the moon, Rita yells at Rito and Goldar for sucking, but Zed isn't too concerned with that because he sees that Billy and Adam are working on something. He then sends Rito and Goldar down to keep an eye on Billy to see what he's doing. I don't know why he'd send them, but okay. At Billy's lab, Billy says he thinks it's as good as it'll get because he doesn't have all the equipment he'd have in the future. Which, again, I feel like they don't know how this whole time travel thing has worked out at all. Billy says that they'll have to use their power coins to also power this device and hopefully this will work. Meanwhile, Goldar and Rito are outside and Rito is listening with a novelty sized stethoscope about what's going on. Then Billy and Adam are heading out and Goldar and Rito are about to head out, but Goldar says they should talk to Zed first. Rito presses on to say that they should just do it themselves. Now it's time for Goldar and Rito to look like straight up child abductors, following Billy and Adam. The two stop because Billy thinks he heard something and Rito and Goldar hide in a bush. This miniseries sucks. Then Rito and Goldar walk into a mailbox and the kids turn around to see no one. They're worried someone is following them. In the command center, Alpha thanks Cestro for being good at science and suddenly Cestro is getting dried out. Then Orko follows as well as uh, Corcus and Titus. Delphine doesn't seem affected for some reason. At a warehouse power plant, thing, the six ranger kids meet up and they give Billy their power coins, and Goldar and Rito show up just as Billy is putting the coins into the device. Billy activates it, and he returns to his teenage form. Then Tommy grabs the device when Billy is just standing there talking smack, and they start running away. There's a fountain in the town square that Alpha sees, and he teleports the alien rangers to the fountain right away. They leave, appearing in a field next to the fountain. I mean, come on Alpha, couldn't you just teleport them into it? Then the alien rangers levitate over the water, getting hydrated. The rangers run into Rito and Goldar, and Goldar just grabs the device. Billy tries to stop him, but he gets zapped away as Goldar takes the power coins out of the device. Then Zed appears on a walkway above them, screaming about how they suck. Then Rita shows up too, and the two of them zap the power coins in Goldar's hands, completely disintegrating the coins. Then Zed and Rita just leave before Rito and Goldar leave after tossing the device onto the ground. Billy says that the power coins are history. So they're screwed. On the moon, Zed says that since the alien rangers are sitting ducks, they're going to turn Billy's device into a monster. Introducing Slotsky, which for some reason really sounds like a racial slur. Then the ranger kids are teleported away and they show up in the command center thanks to Alpha. They ask where the equations are and they tell them what's going on with those dweebs. Also, their telepathic communications are down while they're rehydrating, so Billy is going to go alone. Tommy offers to go with Billy, but Billy pulls some dumb shit about how he's technically older than Tommy right now, so he's gonna go alone. 
Alpha then teleports Billy out. Billy shows up and he starts screaming at the Alien Rangers how a monster is coming, and then Slotsky shows up with the Tangas. It's Morphin Time! The Alien Rangers start to fight off the Tangas pretty easily, and the crowd that's formed around them start talking to Billy about how amazing the Alien Rangers are. And then Oroko tickles a damn Tanga. Also, whoever is doing stunts for Corcus is killing it. Meanwhile, Cestro is breakdancing. I have to admit that these suits are so sleek and cool that they seem to be able to do more with a lot less effort. It's awesome. Also, Titus tosses a Tango away and then he flexes on these hoes. The Tangos disappear and then the alarms go off in the command center and Alpha says that Slotsky is... in the quarry somehow? I mean, he was literally just there. He tells the Alien Rangers to hurry and Slotsky uses a magnet to take their guns from them before Uruko just uses brass knuckles and punches Slotsky right in the face. Rita and Zed are sick of this for some reason and they make Slotsky grow giant, so the Alien Rangers call out their battle borgs. It's time for another telepathic battle with the battle borgs, which I have to admit isn't as bad as I thought it was last time. They do defeat Slotsky pretty easily though. At the fountain, the Angel Grove news have shown up while the Equitians are there with the mayor of Angel Grove, who honors them for being brave heroes. I feel like this is against Zordon's rules, but alright. Also, there's a pride flag in the back, which I have to say is the best way to say that they're accepting of them. Then, Billy is a bummer by saying that it's fine now, but things are only to get worse. Much worse. Over the credits, we just get some bloopers. Well, I can't say that this episode didn't do anything, because Billy is a teenager again now, and the power coins are now totally gone forever, meaning we'll never see those suits again. I'm actually surprised how much serialization there is going on right now, and I'm loving it. I also like that we get a little bit of insight on each of the alien rangers and their fighting style. I mean... Delphine is the stern leader, Cestro is the brains of the team, Oroko seems to be a bit of a goofball, Titus is the brawn, and Corcus is... there, I guess. Hopefully we get some more information on him. Other than that, overall, I dig these rangers, and the kid actors are slowly getting better episode by episode. So will next time continue to improve? Find out then, but until then, may the power protect you.